Are you ready to get started with the exciting world of custom content and mods for The Sims 2, but you just don't know how to begin? Well, this video is for you. We're gonna start with the absolute basics and I'm gonna show you how to get custom content and mods into your game. And I'll also give you some tips on finding good custom content. So let's get started. After The Sims 2 is installed on your computer, then you wanna go to your documents, EA Games, The Sims 2 Ultimate Collection folder. If you just have the disc version and you don't have the Ultimate Collection, it will just say The Sims 2 right here. Inside the folder, it will look like this. You'll have a series of folders and a couple of cache files at the bottom. If this is your first time ever installing custom content, you need to create a new folder. Just right click anywhere on the white space, choose New Folder. Now you have to name the folder exactly like this, Downloads with a capital D. Make sure you spell it right and make sure it's capitalized. This is where the game goes to look for your custom content. Now that we have our folder set up, we have to actually find some custom content. If you're brand new to downloading, I would recommend starting with Mod The Sims. It's very straightforward and easy to download files from this website and there is a ton of custom content for The Sims 2. At the top, click on The Sims 2 and then click Downloads. Here on the Downloads page, you can either scroll through every everything that's been uploaded and it does sort by most recent upload. This one was today at 1 p.m. Or you can filter your downloads. So let's say we wanna get some clothing for our Sims. I'm gonna to go to Body Shop at the top and I'm gonna choose Clothing. Now we can even drill it down further uh, for female clothing. Let's say we wanna go with Every Day and we wanna download for adults. So you can really drill it down to a very specific type of custom content that you're looking for, or you can just browse more broad categories. As you can see, there are 421 pages of downloads. So there's a lot to go through, and this is just for female adult every day. Okay, I see a cute shirt here. Autumn is coming, nine long sleeves. So these are cute, just plain colored shirts. I like to have a lot of plain kind of clothing in my game, normal everyday clothing. Um, so I am gonna download this. Now right here it says this is a Maxis recolor, which means it's a recolor of an item that already exists in your game. So you just have to make sure that you have the correct expansion for it. And this is base game only, so we're good to go. All you have to do to download for Mod The Sims is click the Files tab. Sometimes there will be multiple files here and you might have to read to figure out which one you need, but this is a very easy download and there's only one option. So we're just gonna click that and download it. After you've downloaded it, it should be in your normal downloads folder where everything that you download on your computer goes. If you don't know how to get to your downloads folder, you can open any folder on your computer and underneath of this PC, you will see a downloads folder. If you have Windows 10, it might be slightly different if you're using a different operating system. I have Windows 10 and this is how it looks for me. Now you're gonna see the item that you just downloaded, but it's zipped, so we have to extract the files from inside the zip file. If you've never done this before, you need to download a program called 7-Zip. 7-Zip Dot org is where you can find this. It is a free download and I will link to it down below in the description box. So you want to get the 64-bit Windows version right here. Just click download. It's also going to download into your downloads folder like so and you just need to double click this and install the program. I'm gonna assume you know how to install a program application, so I'm not gonna go into that here. After you've installed the program, then right click on what you downloaded and choose open with. You may have to go down to choose another app if you don't see 7-Zip here in this menu. You want to choose 7-Zip File Manager, not the GUI. You may have to click on more apps, and you may have to scroll down and find it. If it's still not in the list, click on look for another app on this PC, and it should be right here in program files. Choose 7ZFM and open. Now, every time you download a rare file, it will open up with 7-Zip. When it opens up, it's gonna look like this. These are all of the shirts that are inside the package that we just downloaded. Now, go back to your Documents, EA Games, The Sims 2 folder. Open up the Downloads folder that we created earlier. You can click and drag to highlight all of the items in the zip file and then drag them over. They will now be copied into your downloads folder. Then you can close this out and back in your downloads folder, you can delete this, you no longer need it. Another thing that you can do is right click on this file and choose 7-Zip, extract here. So if you're having problems with the other way, 
just try the seven zip extract here. Give it a second and it will extract all of the package files from that zipped file right here into your downloads. Then you can just cut and paste these over into your Sims 2 downloads folder. So you can use either method. You just need to extract what's in here and get it into your Sims 2 downloads folder. Now, sometimes when you're downloading custom content, you may find something you like that requires a different mesh. And the way you can tell is if you scroll down, uh, this says this is a new mesh recolor and means that you will need to download the particular mesh itself in order for this to show up in your game. See the meshes needed section. So if we go to the files tab, and look underneath the download files, there will be a section called meshes needed. If you see this, this means that what you're trying to download needs a mesh on either a different website or a different page of Mod The Sims. This one requires absurd amount of leggings by Cat of Evil Genius. So if we click on that, it takes us to another page on Mod The Sims. We will need to download this mesh in order to use this recolor. So if we go to the files tab, I see a lot of different meshes here and I'm not sure which one we need. So I'm gonna go back to the original post. We're gonna go to description and we're gonna read and see which ones we need. The meshes used are 16, 17, 19, 20, and 24. So we need to make sure we get all of those. 16, 17, 19, 20, and 24. Now these are all in my downloads folder. So I'm gonna click each one of these and click extract here. Seven zip extract here, and it's extracting folders down below. Now that they're all extracted, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold down the shift key on my keyboard and select all of these and then drag them over to my Sims 2 Ultimate Collection Downloads folder. So now we have all the meshes we need. If you open up these files, they include the mesh plus recolor. So this is giving us a bunch of leggings too. If for some reason you didn't want these leggings, you could delete all of these, but make sure you keep the file that says mesh. I'm just gonna keep them all in because you can't have too many leggings as far as I'm concerned. Now that we have the mesh files we need, I'm gonna to go to the files tab on my original download and download each of these files. Requires leggings mesh 16, 20, 19, 17, and 24, which we've already have. If you properly associated 7-zip with your rare files, then as you download, these should open up on their own. You can just click on them and drag them over into your downloads folder then exit out and go to the next one. You may also be able to double click on this to open it and then drag over the file. Whichever way you can get into your zip files is fine, as long as you're able to extract the files, either right-clicking and choosing extract here, double-clicking to open, or having them open automatically. Now in our Sims 2 downloads folder, we have all of our leggings and pants and shirts that we just downloaded. Now there's another type of download you might run across if you're downloading on Mod The Sims or any other sites, and these are called default replacements. These are clearly marked as defaults. Defaults will replace clothing that is already in the game. So Max's clothing will be replaced by one of these. For example, if we click uh, default cowgirl separates, these are default replacement meshes of adult female, teen female, Eve, elder female, top cowgirl shirt. You can only have one single default replacement in your game at a time, and I'll probably make another video to cover these more in depth. If you're brand new to custom content, you might wanna stay away from defaults if you don't understand what you're replacing. When I first started downloading clothing, I didn't download any defaults. I just went with standalone stuff. If you're to the point where you're ready for defaults, then this video is probably too basic for you. So we're gonna skip past defaults for now. I just wanna make you aware that these exist and what they are. And if you download, if you downloaded more than one default replacement for the cowgirl shirt in the game, for example, you could have glitches, you could have uh, Sims with no torso. It can cause a lot of issues in your game. So you don't wanna do that. If you want to use a default replacement, go right ahead. I have all of the clothing in my game replaced, but I did not start out using default replacements. I started out just getting standalone stuff. In my opinion, the easiest type of clothing to download is clothing that has the mesh included, doesn't require you to go to any other website, and is not a default replacement. That's what I started with. That's what I would recommend you start with if you're brand new to custom content. So here's an example of that. Here's a really cute dress. 
um, saltwater taffy dress. There's three different recolors. It does say there's a new me it's a new mesh recolor, but if you go further down and read, it says mesh by Lena is included. That means it's already in the download and you don't have to go download anything else. So if we just download this file, it includes the mesh and all of the recolors as well. So that's another type of custom content that you'll see are recolors. Recolors are very easy. They're usually recolors of items that are already in the game or recolors of someone else's mesh. For example, here are some recolors of the base game granny shirt. And these look very nice. You know, you can always use more clothes for your grandmas. And if we scroll down, it says that this is a Maxis recolor, which means that it is a recolor of an item that already exists in your game. So this is the absolute most basic type of custom content clothing that you can get is just recolors of Max's clothing. There's no additional meshes needed or anything and we're just gonna download this. If you are very afraid of custom content, you can just start with recolors. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Um, I just started out getting only recolors. So you can just go and search all downloads and you can search for recolor. And this is gonna search in everyday clothing for recolors. You might also try recolors with an S. And you'll get, you'll find recolors of other people's meshes here, 12 recolors of flower misties something. And you'll also find recolors of base game adult female long sleeve shirts. So just stuff that's already in the game, Maxis recolors. So if you're just very afraid of, of getting started with custom content, start with recolors. Get comfortable with that. Get comfortable with the downloading process and the installing process before you go trying to get all these crazy meshes and stuff. So now we're gonna install a couple things from buy mode. So in The Sims 2, all of your custom content can go into your same downloads folder. You can have subfolders in it, like maybe one folder for clothing, one folder for build mode, that kind of thing. I have a specific way that I organize my downloads folder and I'm gonna be making a video about that in the future, but just organize it however you like. Don't go too deep with the subfolders though, because if you go too deep, the names will be too long and the game won't be able to read them. It is a good idea though to keep your stuff organized from the very beginning so you don't end up with a big mess of a folder and you don't know where anything is. So here's an example of my downloads folder and the way that I organize it personally. I'm gonna go into this more in depth in another video, but I just wanted to give you an idea. If you start downloading stuff, you might want to start separating it out by clothing, uh, by mode, build mode, just whatever makes sense to you. Now in by mode on Mod The Sims, we can also drill down by room, by function. Let's say I'm looking for a dining room table. So I'm going to go to function, surfaces, dining tables. And then I'm gonna scroll through and here's a lovely pine wood table. So let's download that. This is a new mesh and means that it's a brand new self-contained object that does not require a specific expansion pack. So when you see this is a new mesh, that means everything you need is gonna be included in this one download. That's a very good thing to see. I really don't like going and hunting for meshes on some other website. Um, I prefer to just get things that are self-contained. So we can download this table by itself right here. So I just wanna point out to make sure that you are unzipping your files, what you need to look for is package files. You need to make sure that everything in your downloads folder is a package file. Now it can be in a subfolder like this. If you open up the subfolder, these are all package files. One mistake that some people make is they'll just pull over this zipped file into their downloads folder like this. If you do that, this compressed zipped folder, you're not gonna see that custom content. You have to make sure that you open it up and take what's inside of it and put it into your downloads folder. Sometimes this might be confusing because this file looks exactly like a package file, but if you look under file type, this says rare file. That means it's zipped. A rare or a zipped file are zipped. So you're gonna have to open that up and extract. Don't just pull this into your downloads folder because that won't work. So now that you know how to install custom content, let's talk a little bit about mods. Now mods are installed just exactly the same way as custom content. I'm gonna go back to the Sims 2 downloads and then I'm gonna choose game mods. You can also go to my website at pleasantsims.com, choose mods list, Sims 2, and you can see my huge list of recommended mods. So let's say you're scrolling through, you see one that you like, Monique's hacked computer, you follow the link, 
and you download it. Sometimes it can be hard to figure out where the actual download is. This particular mod, I get asked a lot, like people can't figure out how to download it. So you have to look for these zip files right here. So you'd wanna download all three of these to get Monique's hacked computer. Then just like the custom content, I'm gonna pull all of this over. Sometimes there will be readme files in with mods. You might wanna hold on to these if it has good information that you could reference. Um, I will open it up and look and see if it's something I want to keep. Um, for me personally, I don't feel like I need this. Um, sometimes they'll have instructions though, so it might be a good idea to read these if you're new to mods. And if you want, you can put those in with your downloads just to have it for later. So here's a mod that you might like, no teen uni notification. If you get annoyed by this little notification you get for all your teenagers and you don't want that in your game, here's a mod that will disable that. So we can just download that here on the files page the same way that we download custom content. With mods, you want to read the description. You want to make sure this isn't going to conflict with any other mods you have. See, this one right here shows conflicts and no college nagging by Saijon. If you have this mod, then you can't download this one too because you'll have a conflict. So read through and make sure that you don't have any mods that conflict with the mod you're trying to download. Sometimes conflicts will be unknown until you get them into your game and start having an issue. And sometimes you'll just have to troubleshoot that yourself, figure out what's causing the problem. Now that we've got some custom content and a couple of mods, let's go into the game and make sure everything shows up correctly. When you load up your game for the first time after you've installed custom content or mods, you're going to get a window that looks like this. I've had several people comment or send me an email um, freaking out because of this little caution sign. These warning signs are only there to alert you that these mods modify the game behavior in some way, which is what we want mods to do. So it's completely safe, it's completely normal that you see these caution signs. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. I think it's a bit of overkill on their part, but I guess they just want to alert you like, hey, these files change the game. Are you sure you want to do this? they override some of the natural game behavior. Down here, you're gonna have two options, disable custom content or enable custom content. Make sure you click enable custom content and then choose okay. Now you can load up your game like normal. I'm going into create a sim so we can check out the new stuff that we just downloaded. I recommend when you go custom content shopping that you come in periodically and test out the things that you just recently downloaded. That way you know immediately if there's a problem with the custom content, if it doesn't show up if it's bad or if you just plain old don't like it and then you can remove it from your game now before you lose it in a sea of custom content. So if I go into clothing, now the first items that show up are the new shirts that we downloaded. And I like those, those are really cute. I'm gonna have to put those in my main game. Then we downloaded these dresses. So I'm gonna check these out. I really recommend getting a widescreen fix mod so that this part of the UI does not cover up your sim when you're trying to look at her. But I'll just look at her in the mirror for now. And so, yeah, these are really cute. I really like these dresses, so I would be keeping these as well. All your custom content will show up ahead of the Maxis stuff. Now, I'm going to change my sim to an elder because we did get some elder clothing. Uh, here are the shirts that I got. Oh, these are cute. The granny shirt recolors. When you're in create a sim and you're looking at your custom content, there will be a delete button here. So let's say that I don't like this color. I don't like this recolor, but I like all the others. I can click on this and choose delete and it will permanently delete the item from your computer. Now, one thing I can say about this is you wanna be very careful. You do not want to delete default replacements. If you delete default replacements through the game like this, it can really screw up your game. Just to be on the safe side, I almost never delete anything from Create a Sim. Instead, I will go to my folder and find it and delete it. Now, I've loaded a lot so we can check out the table that we downloaded, and I can see here that it has a little star on the icon, and this means that it's custom content, so it's very easy for you to see which one you downloaded. And I'm gonna place that on the ground there and we can have a look at it. And if you like this, you can keep it in your game. Just like with the clothing, custom content in the buy mode catalog will have a delete button. So if you really, if you got in here and you just really didn't like the look of this table for whatever reason, you could delete it right here in game. So I'm just gonna press the delete button to show you. 
and now it's gone. It's completely deleted from my downloads folder. Now, I usually don't like to do this for a couple reasons. One is because I may have had that in another folder. Like I may have had a pine table folder in here and it's just gonna leave an empty folder. It's only gonna delete the package file itself. So if you have it in a subfolder, it's just gonna leave an empty subfolder in your main folder. Luckily, there are some precautions. Like if you click on any of the Maxis stuff, there is no delete button. So you can't accidentally delete that. You can only delete custom content. But in some cases, you may be able to delete default replacements. So that's why you have to be very careful. I would just always recommend trying to delete the Things that you don't like from your downloads folder if possible just to be extra safe so that's really all there is to installing custom content you download it extract it put it into your downloads folder enable custom content in your game and use the custom content if you run across a piece of bad custom content that doesn't work how you expected then you can always remove it and no harm is done one more thing i want to mention is if you have an issue with your game not starting after you've downloaded custom content you may have have to go in and delete these two cache files, accessory.cache and groups.cache. It's completely safe to delete them. The game will generate new ones once it starts up again. So just delete both of these, double click on your Sims 2 icon and your game will start up. I hope that will help some of you guys get started with custom content. It's really not difficult to do. It's quite easy in The Sims 2 and it really makes your game experience better because after a while, you just get tired of the same old clothes and hair and furniture and you might want something new and fresh in your game. So happy simming, ha happy custom content shopping, and if you need some ideas on places to find custom content, I have a list on my website of my favorite sites, including tumblers and blogs and forums and things where I get my custom content. So go check that out. I'll put the link down in the description box. And also, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below and let me know what other beginner questions would you like answered about The Sims too. I'm thinking of making some more of these beginner tutorial videos, things like organizing your custom content, installing lots, uh, default replacements, and there's a lot of other things I want to get into more in depth. So if you have any ideas or any questions that you want answered, leave a comment down below and let me know. My name is Cindy and I will see you with a new video very soon. Thank you so much for watching.